Okay, so this here is my Synology disk station, uh, NAS or Network Attached Storage device. This is a DS1815 Plus unit, and it's died. This is a, a common problem from what I can read on the internet with these, and uh, I need the data off it, but Synology have recently moved their warehouse, and there's currently a, like a three or four week turnaround on repairs. So I need to get a bit of data off this that I don't already have double backed up. Uh, it's not anything that I can't replace, but I would rather copy it off this unit over LAN because my internet is painfully slow and this has been syncing to this unit throughout the last week. It's still on my remote server and I could sync it again, but if I can save time, why bother? So um, I'll show you what it does, well, or doesn't do. If you plug in the power, you can hear it. Do a little arc, but it doesn't come on. It's totally dead. Ah, oh, it appears to be totally dead. So if I unplug that, uh, I've worked out that the power supply in here is uh, just a standard ATX 24-pin connector to power the motherboard. So um, I've removed the casing which the casing is just held in with six screws. There's two on that side, two on that side, and two on the top. So we'll take your casing off. Then you can see right here, the power supply is here. This is the 24 pin ATX connector. I've checked the pin out and the wiring colors and they match the standard ATX 20 plus four pin power connector. As you can see there, mostly the same uh, colours and things they use as well. There's a couple of additional ones on the one in the disk station but that doesn't matter, the unit will work with uh, an ATX power supply. The only connectors that aren't standard in this are the ones powering the hard drive bays which are on this side here. So you can see here the power supply unit itself and uh, it goes out and the 24 pin goes over there and then we've got these two here which are 5 volt and 12 volt connectors and these are powering the uh, back plane which all the hard drive SATA connectors are on along the back so that you'll need to power if you are going to run the unit with drives in so um, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to unplug this 24 pin power connector from here which can be quite tight so you may need to uh, gently persuade it to come out just take your time, don't be too um, tough on it. Possibly get something in the gap here to prise it apart. I'm just going to slightly ease it out. Like so. There we go. And then pull this out. Don't cut any cable ties or anything because obviously that could void your warranty. My unit is still in warranty. And it's a bit strange with mine because there's a known CPU issue with some Atom CPUs which can be a dead board. And there's also um, issues with the power supply in them. So if you test the power supply that should show if the power supply is working or not. Well, if I plug my power supply in to a tester and then plug it in, it turns on and seems to work fine. And as you can hear, the hard disks are spinning up. So, that's good. The power supply is working. So you would think the motherboard is dead in this case. Well, actually, that is not the case. I'm going to leave this power supply tester plugged into here for the moment. And I'm going to get this ATX PC power supply. I'm going to plug the 24 pin in to the motherboard on the disk station. Okay, so I've plugged the power supply into the motherboard and I've also ejected my disks. I'm just going to pull them forward for the moment. My phone did stop recording for some reason, don't know why. But anyway, uh, the power supply is in, so if I turn this on, now this is obviously just powering the motherboard, and press the power on the unit, 
it lights up. This power supply runs and the motherboard's actually working. So the power supply in the unit is working and all the voltages are there. And the motherboard's working when powered with a different power supply. So I don't know what exactly is going on here. But there must be a problem with something and obviously this unit needs fixing big time. But anyway, if I shut this down, I'm just going to turn off the power supply. So that's off now. I'm now going to put in my discs and lock them back into place. Okay. So now I'm going to plug in the power supply for the hard drives and turn on the power supply power in the motherboard at the same time. So watch this. put the unit on and now you can hear the discs are starting up let me move the phone down this loud noise is this uh, crappy power supply fan but the unit will flash for a little while and then it should start up as normal I've just got an ethernet cable to plug in Yep. I'll probably fast forward this flashing away. Oh, there we go. We can see the LAN activity now. Is on. It's still flashing away. It's still starting up. You can hear the drives. And there's the beep. Power light stopped flashing, and it's online. And all the discs are working. So the unit's now running. It's off, and it's working okay. So using two power supplies, this jump started the unit works with the internal one powering the drives and this one powering the motherboard so I don't quite know what the hell's going on here but if you have this problem and you can get hold of a PC power supply do it and obviously if you haven't got a tester or anything like this they are cheap I would recommend you buy one because they're handy things and they're only cheap off eBay but if you haven't got one put a piece of cable or a paper clip linked between the two connectors on the power supply in the unit. You go between the green and the black. So I'll show you that really quickly now as well with another way to start it up. Okay, so if you've not got a power supply tester like this unit here to check if the supply works, the other way you can do it is by getting the 24 pin main power connector here. I'll just move this over. And you want to get a piece of wire or something conductive um, a paper clip, a piece of wire, so it's just something metal, something that's going to conduct electricity. And uh, you want to look on your power connector here, and you can see the different coloured wires that they've got. The green one, if you link it to a black one, will force the power supply to turn on. So, if I get this piece of wire here, and go to the green wire, which make sure you operate it in the, the right ones here, this is very important. That's one, two, three, four in from the end. So I want to go from green, which is this, to one of the others. So you, any of these black ones you can use. So I'm just going to use these green and black ones that are side by side. So this is three and four that I'm using. So I've put this uh, paper clip or piece of wire or whatever into the connector. Make sure it's not touching the casing or near anything that it can shot out. And if we plug in the power, the power supply will come on. You'll hear the hard drive spin up on this. Listen. The power supply is running. So yeah, by linking through the green connector to the black connector, you can turn on a power supply without it being plugged into something. So that's the other way of firing this up. So I hope you found this helpful in one way or another. If it helps you uh, get some important data off the unit that you need for whatever reason that you've not already got backed up somewhere else. If you like the video, leave a like, leave a comment if you've got any questions, and subscribe to future random technology videos like this one. Thanks for watching.